Welcome back to Scott's Comics and Collectibles and what a week it's been. This is a charity shop pickup video uh, and guys it's been a busy week. There's been a lot going on and I've picked up a hell of a lot as well. So let's get straight on with the pickups. Uh, so if you were definitely born in the 80s, raised in the 90s, you will definitely know 100% what this first thing is that I'm going to show you. So in a charity shop on Saturday because uh, I was down at my parents and my parents live in Catford in uh, the borough of Lewisham uh, and I was, went, thought right I'm going to go and just get a sneaky cheeky Chinese uh, as I do when I'm always down there. It gives me time to reflect on life in general just sitting there on my own, chilled out, uh, no company, just eating my food and just reflecting on life as you do. Uh, and on the way back, you'll know me as well, I have to pop into a few charity shops just on the way back and it's free on the way back to my parents house. Uh, and sitting in the window, £10 for the lot, once upon a time. So this was a brilliant series which come out fortnightly, uh, each magazine, and it's a little bit based on like traditional fairy tales and fables uh, from back in the day. So you'd have like Sleeping Beauty, Let's see what other ones got in here, the goose with the golden eggs, you had like uh, the enchanted princess, there, there was like loads, there was, I think there's 24 magazines, uh, which the two binders here, the whole set, 24 magazines. Now, the great thing about these when they come out every fortnight is that, and you'll know straight away what I'm going to say, is that the first ever issue come with a carry case. Here's the carry case. Here's another carry case. You're asking me why is there two? For the simple reason is every magazine came with a cassette which would tell you the story. So it'd kind of like read you the story. So you'd listen to the story and follow the words. Uh, and I absolutely loved this as a kid. And it was one of the things that I ended up collecting when I was a kid as well. So to see it for £10, I thought I'm having that. It brings back so many good memories and it is definitely retro related. Uh, so I picked that up. Looking on eBay for sold listings. Because I thought, oh, I'll just check it out. See what the mood looks like in terms of a selling point of view. Uh, 50 to £60 for the set, which is balmy. Uh, but I guess everyone wants a part of their childhood and that screams out to me. That's something that I used to pick up. Now, if I go on to other things I used to pick up, and this was sent to me by a few of Phil. Uh, thanks a lot, Phil, for sending me this. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I should have called this out on my last pickup video. Totally forgot about it because I put the envelope down on the floor. However, what Phil has sent to me again brings back so many memories of me as a child going up to the corner shop i would have picked up like once upon a time i would have picked up the lucky bags which had the turtle on the front you get loads of free gifts four comics for one pound trading cards pogs the corner shop was your go-to place when you were a kid in the 90s literally go-to place uh, you'd buy everything from water little water pistols there you'd buy little bangers anything you wanted you'd buy there uh and I used to buy it when we had turtles come out over here. Obviously, we had Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because Ninja was deemed too violent for us. Uh, but we had the Hero Turtles. And I used to love picking these up. I'd read them every week. And I believe these comics, if I remember rightly, used to have to buy like the Sunday Mirror. And I think they had like a little free comic clip of a story. Every Sunday, I'd make my parents get the mirror and I'd cut that little comic strip out. And if you... If you born, if you kind of raised in the 90s, you'll know what I'm on about. They'd have a little comic, uh, little comic cut in every Sunday in the mirror, back of the paper. Uh, used to have that, and then they'd also do a thing where you could collect little coins and put them into a coin binder or like a, a uh, background of like the Turtle City with a blimp, and you put each of the coins in, or you'd have a little sewer and you put the coins in. Uh, but this was massive for me. I remember picking these up. So Phil has been kind enough to send these to me. And look at this, this is what I mean about the freebies. And we talked about cereal the other week. Look at that for an ad. Turtle cards in shreddies. Uh, you know, oh, that, I remember those as well, rice calls. So look, some cool ads on the back as well of these. The toy is zero hour, but look, turtle power. Absolutely turtle power. So I remember turtles was huge, absolutely huge. It still is, it's got a massive cult following uh, and rightly so. I remember there used to be like odd horror stories as I was growing up going, that, did you ever hear about the kid who thought the turtles were 100% real and they went down into the sewer and got lost or they lost their life? I was like, whoa, these are some hardcore stories for being a kid. Uh, who would go and play in the sewers thinking there's actual real ninja turtles or hero turtles down there? I don't know, but yeah, apparently I remember hearing all these horror stories. I don't know if they're true or not. They're mostly gossip 
just to get everyone talking. But yeah, no, it def this definitely brings, and no, I did not go into any sewers, guys. Uh, I knew to stay away from the sewers. Uh, you got to stay away from that gray water, as they say. Uh, but yes, look at these. Look at that ad as well, that ad's crazy. But yeah, thanks for those, Phil. Much appreciated, as always. I will definitely read them as well, because they bring back memories. I remember buying them. Uh, so we've got that. Back to some more charity shop pickups, because I thought that's a nice little tie-in with the story about things I used to pick up when I was a child. Uh, so guys, I'm always picking up at the moment, when I see them, uh, the Harry Potter books. Oh, I always pick them up, especially if they're cheap enough. These are like 50p each. 50p for a Harry Potter book, you can't go wrong. Uh, I believe one of these is first edition, or they might both be when I was looking at them. Uh, but I pick them up as and when I see them. I've worked in retail for a number of years as well, and I have all the original Poz uh, advertising in my loft for all of the books uh, that we used to put down the, the display. I don't know, for some reason at the time I was like, yeah, I want to take these display home. So I used to take all the Poz home and I've got them up there. I know I've definitely got everything for the Goblet of Fire because it's the one with the Phoenix. Nope. Which is the Order of the Phoenix. I've got everything for Order of the Phoenix up in my loft. Uh, and it's a hell of a lot, like cardboard cutouts, side posters, plimp sides, everything. I just, I remember taking them all home uh, as I was allowed to. Uh, but yes, Harry Potter. And I think this goes back to, if I look at the moment, everything from the 80s is massive and rightly so. Uh, and it always has had a demand uh, money-wise, but the money-wise, especially for these items now, increases because the amount of people that want those items. So if you look at toys, for instance, comics, finals now as well, everything's kind of creeping up in price and it has done for some time. 90s stuff is starting to become huge. Toys you can't even get now in terms of 90s stuff and stuff you wouldn't be paying much money for. So in terms of like your WWF Hasbro figures, wrestling figures, crazy amount of money now the wcw uh, wrestling figures massively starting to increase in price because people now realize that in the uk we had uk exclusives versus what the guys in america had and the guys in america who are into the stuff want those uk exclusives uh, so they demand money uh comics are the same so if you look at comics from the 90s i remember there was an x-men run by jim lee which had a uh, kind of leading cover together of all the x-men kind of animate uh, the animated series of the x-men kind of looked like leading on issue four of that comic which is first on mega red uh it was nothing com comic guys i was paying 50p i've mostly got about 10 in the loft uh literally they were nothing comics you couldn't get rid of them now they're demanding so last time i looked they're demanding anywhere from 24 to 40 pound because that character's become leaked to a tv show leaked to a movie that from being a nothing comic which you couldn't get rid of is now demanding money. So you can see how these things from the 90s are starting to step up in price. Clothing's another prime example. People are starting to buy those desirable pieces of clothing that are in the 90s uh, and it's driving the prices up. So I always try and look. If I look at now or over the last 15 to 20 years, what is it that stood out for especially a younger generation that they might be looking to go, actually, one day I'm going to have the capital cash to buy those back and i want a decent collection of that stuff so i asked this question before a lot of people were like ben 10 scott jump on ben 10 ben 10 is going to be huge kids are picking it up uh, i guess if you look at pokemon pokemon's already gone through that boom youtubers have made that massive in terms of some of your celebrity youtubers uh, and especially some of the younger celebrities where they're buying graded pokemon cards base sets uh, and you see some of those base boxes if you've got them sealed you're talking it's paying for a house. It's literally paying for a house. Or even like a top graded Charizard is pretty much going to give you the deposit, if not a lot more, to lay down to get a house. It's it's crazy money for Pokemon. So I always try and look and I always think Harry Potter definitely sits to something where, you know, if I was of that generation, I remember going to the movies, seeing the first one uh, and then seeing the last one. And when you get that uh, 19 years later, is it? Or 17 years later? Someone will correct me anyway. Uh, and then everyone in cinema is like, yes! And you see Harry and his children, obviously, going off to Hogwarts. Uh, but I think as people get older, they're going to want a set and think, actually, I remember going to the midnight kind of book release of this. I remember trying to get through the book in an hour and a half, two hours, and trying to be the first one to look at it to see what happens to certain characters. I think people will want a set of these sitting on their shelf, uh, along with maybe some of the figures or some of the merchandise. I think Harry Potter is going to be big in the future. One of the other ones I've invested quite heavily on, and I've said this a number of times, I've invested quite heavily on uh, oh Marvel movie posters. So I think Marvel 
is going to be huge. It's always huge from a comic point of view, toys point of view. I think as people get older and they've been introduced to the Marvel Universe or the comic universe, DC and Marvel through movies, uh, that people will want a movie poster to them to look back on and go, actually, this is what got me into it. So I've got literally every movie poster of the Marvel movies ever since Iron Man all the way up to the uh, Black Widow movie, actually, that comes out next week. Uh, so I've got every uh, movie poster, variant-wise. I've got more likely all of them now, but I think you're going to get people, when they get into their 30s and go, actually, I want a Black Panther. That meant a huge amount for me to see that character in a movie, what that movie meant to me, what it stood for. I want that Black Panther uh, movie poster. Uh, or I want that Captain Marvel. That was a huge movie. I want that Wonder Woman from DC. I want that movie poster because that meant so much to me. Iron Man kicking everything off and the way uh, Robert Downey Jr. portrayed that character. I want that movie poster. Uh, and it's less space. You've got a movie poster, to display it in one place but it gives that sentimental value to you. It gives you those memories, that good feeling. Uh, so I've invested quite heavily in Marvel movie posters, which people will know from my old videos. I've got loads of Pokemon cards already. I've got uh, two sets of every base set since it started, because I used to collect that myself. And I get heavily into the Harry Potter books as well, just picking them up. That's a little bit on that. I don't want to go too much into that, because that's like that's an overload for a charity shop pickup video. But let me know your thoughts and views in the comments in terms of what you think is going to be big over time. Because I, I think it's... I find it amazing to get people's points of views, what they think is going to be big. Uh, you know, everything has a tendency to go in roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts, like we say. You look at VHS, in my eyes, starting to come back in. You look at cassettes, you're seeing more of them around. Finals is a prime example. Finals have just done a massive 360 huge huge in the uh 80s i want to say 70s 80s when uh still in the 90s a little bit mid 90s to 2000 went dead cd come out obviously a lot of digital media but now final starting to come back up kind of old retro -y tech starting to come back up so it'd be interesting to hear from you guys what you think of the things or trends tr uh, trendsetters things to look out for for the future or what you think now you need to invest in because you can see that going up Please don't put in there Beanie Babies. We've already seen what's happened for Beanie Babies. A massive, massive amount of people investing in those over the 90s. And I think that market crashed. We might as well say that market's crashed. Uh, gone, you can pick them up now for next to nothing. Thinking of some of the money on uh, that was being spent on those. I guess Funko Pops, you know, let's say the dreaded word. Some people see it as a dreaded word. I actually like some of the Funko Pops that come out. And I pick up the ones that relate to me. But it'd be interesting to get people's points of views on Funko Pops as well. Because some of those faulted Funko Pops go for some big money. And I know there's some collectors out there. And I know from a comic community, toy community, there's a little bit of love. But it's a little bit of, I call it a Marmite effect. So it's a love-hate relationship with when it comes to Funko Pops. Uh, but they've got a value. They've definitely got a value. I see people at the comic conventions. I see people at the big... Uh, the big uh, film and comic conventions, the massive conventions we have in the UK, specifically going for pops. So there's definitely a demand there and there's definitely a value for these pops. So it'd be interesting just to hear your points of view. I guess, and then we haven't touched on gaming. Gaming is something I still think hasn't hit its peak. Uh, you know, I, I just look at, if you look at toys, you look at comics now, people are wanting to pick that stuff up. There's still a huge gaming community. I'm not saying there's not a gaming community, but and that uh, games are very valuable already. But I think that's just going to get more valuable over time. If you look at what people are looking at, at now, they want back, they want their old consoles, you know, your N64s, PlayStation. But I'm talking about when do you think PlayStation 2 is going to become? Actually, I want to start picking up every PlayStation 2. I want to start picking up PlayStation 3. Uh, you know, toys are massive. But when you drifted out of toys and toys weren't being made as on a mass scale as what they're being made, especially in the 90s, uh, everything moved to computers. Everything moved to computers. Everyone was playing computers. And it was Sega and Nintendo kind of pushing out before Sony come in and took a massive proportion of that marketplace. But let's leave that there. I could, I'm going to get too deep into this. And it's a charity shop pickup video, guys. But what else have I picked up from the charity shops? This was a fantastic pickup. Uh, and literally, it's picked up today during my lunch break. And guys, you'll know I'm very fortunate that. Uh, fortunate or not fortunate, it's not good for your well-being, all this working from home in my eyes. I struggle a little bit with it, with the interaction. I like to interact with people. I like to talk a lot, as you all know. Uh, but I kind of go out at lunchtime, go for a little walk. I look at the charity shops and it's strange that there's a lot of decent stuff that gets put out during the week. 
Uh, rightly so, you know, you've got people that are clearing out boot sales or they've cleared out their house at the weekend, put it there for a Monday morning. And I find a lot of decent stuff during the week if I pop during my lunch hour. But today was no exception, uh, no exception. Just as I walked into this one charity shop, I saw them opening this bag on the till full of games. Uh, they said I can go through it and I picked up pretty much most of it. They've done me a deal on literally four pounds for the bag. Because uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, no, we were just going to put them out anyway uh, and we were going to do like a deal. Because a lot of charity shops as well, which you don't realise, guys, I didn't realise as well, they have budgets to hit. I never knew that. Uh, and these budgets they've got hit means that they do offers during the week. So mostly clothing offers, especially where I am anyway. So you'll see them say everything's half price today. Uh, it's the same with bric a brac If it's got like a red mark on it, it's half price. Uh, and it's the same with computer and electronics. They do offers during the week, I guess, to try and hit those budgets. Uh, and give money, uh, obviously, and rightly so, back to the charity. Uh, but yeah, I picked up quite a lot of games uh, and a CD. For some reason, I put this CD in there, uh, picked up the best of hip hop. Best of hip hop, I'm not gonna go wrong with that. It's nice to listen to. Uh, it could be too upbeat and get me quite hyper as I'm working. Uh, but in terms of games, so I did laugh and I found this one last in the bag. Uh, it's hilarious because you guys know, or whoever sees me, especially on Instagram, Another Wii Sports. I do love my Wii Sports. I pick them up everywhere. Uh, I think that's got to be about 15 now that I've got of the Wii Sports. I just It's like a little competition with myself just to pick them up. Uh, I've got black. And guys, I didn't check any of these. That's the weirdest thing. I did not check any of these. Uh, I absolutely went ape when I saw this. I'm a huge Monkey Island fan from the PC games. Uh, and I saw it on PlayStation. I don't have it on PlayStation yet. Uh, saw it and I was like, right, I'm definitely 100% getting that. And this no doubt will be something I play. I love these kind of games. Favourite game, my favourite go-to game. Just when I'm chilling out, this kind of style, Broken Swords. I absolutely love Broken Swords. Uh, it's one of the first games I had when I had my PlayStation in terms of this style of gaming, interacting and puzzle solving. Uh, and I still go back to it now. I love the music on it. I love the kind of, I love the story. I love the plot. Uh, and just using your brain to try and solve those puzzles. I love it. Another one of these, guys, you will know. I'm hoping this isn't going to be now my kind of game I come across all the time, like my Wii Sports and my Mario for the Wii. But I said a couple of weeks ago, I picked one copy up at a boot sale. Uh, then I found one at the charity shop. Then I found another one two days later. And now I found another one. Uh, they've got a good sell on, obviously, these ones with the Mega Drive. But I'm hoping that isn't going to be one that I'm going to find all the time. Because I'm a sucker for picking up those retro ones. And I will just keep picking them up. Uh, Mar uh, Mario, Mario, this is Batman even, Batman on the DS, let's put it over there because that's a smaller one, I don't want everything falling down, now, I need to check the trading value, I won't keep this one, I will trade it into CX, I'm not a fan of uh, Minecraft, but Minecraft was there, so I picked that up, don't know about this one, but I picked it up, Heaven Heavenly Sword, so I picked that up, don't know enough about that, all in there, uh, Dirt Shutdown. This looked like a decent game and my cup of tea, as you call it. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of Destruction Derby, to be fair. Hence why I picked it up. Uh, so, yeah, picked that up. Never seen this one before on the PlayStation 3. Uh, but, yeah. Family Games Night 4. So, I picked that up. Little Big Planet 2. Uh, they've always got good sell-on value as well. Uh, so, I picked up. I've got one to three already, but picked that up. Rayman Originals, pick that up, it's all in there. Haven't seen this one before and I don't, I've got the bits and pieces needed to play it. Uh, start the party, so I picked that up. Don't even know, it, it just seems like one of those games that won't have much value either. Uh, Angry Birds, first time coming across this on PlayStation 3. So pick that up. Tomb Raider, weren't too sure if I've already got this one but picked it up anyway. Another strange one, Mini Ninjas. Not seen this before, so he picked it up. And then some PlayStation 2 and a couple of, uh, I think, a Wii game and Xbox. So, Shadow of Rome. Not seen that before. Capcom. Uh, so far, I'm 100% going to pick that up. And everything, when I was looking at it, it all looked like newish, so no marks at all. Uh, but yeah, don't know about this, but Shadows of Rome looks pretty decent, so I picked that up. Now, when I saw this, almost had a mini heart attack. I've been lucky enough to pick this up twice now, but this is the director's cut. Uh, Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2. Super Monkey Ball Adventure. So I honestly thought this guy was a Sega character and he was only on certain platforms 
uh, consoles, but yeah, PlayStation 2, not seen it on PlayStation 2, so pick that up. I've already got, look, when I go to a church shop and you've got all these, how can I not pick up, even so I've got it, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, one of the best Grand Theft Autos, brilliant soundtrack. It's got the poster and the map in there, etc. So I picked that up as part of the bundle. Uh, these were the Kinect games that were in there. I did ask if they had any consoles. Again, no consoles, but I picked up Sports and I picked up the Adventures. Uh, reason I picked these up is I always come across the bars uh, and I, you can just bundle them with games. So I picked those up. Batman Begins. Uh, I haven't got that, so that's good to have. And then the other one that I checked straight away, and it's the first game that stood out, to be fair. I thought it was going to be missing the disc because it was the only Wii game apart from sports. So two desirable Wii games in that bundle, Mario Kart. Uh, so I was shocked to see that. Definitely shocked to see that in there. Uh, so I picked Mario Kart up as well. So it's looking like a brilliant kind of pickup. I, I'm not done, guys, because it comes back to the electrical items, which I've put onto Instagram already, I think back end of last week, but I haven't done a video on them. So I need to show you guys what I picked up, and you're going to be quite surprised. I'm trying to look for the two games that come with this next item i don't know where i've put them they're over there so i picked up a ps4 ps4 20 pounds with a pad and two games the game was minecraft and no no man's sky no man's sky i've set the playstation 4 up because i've hooked myself up to an account on playstation uh, it works fine everything's fine on there uh Guys, it was barmy to be picking this up for £20. I honestly thought it was going to be broken and I thought I'm, t I'm just going to take a take a wimp on 20 quid. Uh, it works. I've signed up. Signed up as Scott Comics. Uh, you'll see a little picture of me as Spider-Man if you want to add me. Uh, I've not played any games yet, so I started to download. Uh, so I downloaded Star Wars Squadrons. So I played that. It was okay. But Jesus, doesn't it take time with these new consoles to download contents? Uh, first time me kind of being into these new con uh, into these new consoles. The reason I picked this up straight away is there is a game coming out that I want to get, and it's only coming out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox, the new Xbox, uh, which is Back for Blood. So it is from the same developers that done Left 4 Dead, and Left 4 Dead again, one of my favourite games. Uh, you get to kill zombies, you get to kill zombies and you get to do it on your own or as a team and it's multiplayer. I absolutely love it. So when I saw that game was coming out, I knew I had to be on the hunt uh, for a console. When I see them at boot sales, they've been a bit expensive. I was not expecting to walk into a charity shop and find a PS4 for £20 with a pad. I was honestly thinking it wasn't going to work. Uh, but yeah, everything's there. I'm, I'm signed up. I'm on. Uh, so I picked that up. And then the last two bits I picked up, so 20 quid for that. £30 for these last two bits I'm going to show you. Now, the first piece, I don't know what it is, guys. I need some help. I'll tell you what it says on it. They're both Sony pieces. I should have brought them a little bit closer. They're, they're bloody heavy as well. Uh, but let me grab this first piece. Oh, so I've got all the controls and all the wires. Uh, absolutely no idea what this one is. But it does say Digital Audio Video Control Center. I thought this was like a DVD player uh slash some kind of player uh which goes into stereo i don't know but yeah i have no idea what this is it was part of the bundle deal for everything uh which i paid 50 for in total with a ps4 and these two uh so i took it but guys it's so heavy uh or i'm or i'm so weak but yeah it's got everything i've got all the wires uh so that was one of the pieces i need to go and put this over here on the couch just bear with me guys bear with me because uh, i'll pick up the last piece as well Oh, mate, this, this one is even heavier. So, massive, massive shout out to the reseller kid. I watch his videos literally every time they drop. Uh, a fantastic character, fantastic content on the channel. I'll try and put a picture up in the corner. Uh, and this guy, is, in my eyes, he's smashing it. For someone that age he is, and he's going around and he's finding the stuff, he's hustling, uh, he's buying bits and pieces, and he's trying to make a business. He's trying to do well for himself, and you know, Credit where credit's due, uh, fantastic content. He's doing bloody well. Definitely check the channel out. I love it. I love I love his negotiation that he does in there, the fact he shows you everything. Uh, uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant videos. And like I say, I'm learning every day from in terms of bits to look out for, understanding the reselling community a bit more as well. I, I find it fascinating. So don't get me wrong. I love my collecting. I love my toys, love my comics. 
the retailing, uh, the reselling aspect of everything has been something that I've mostly watched a lot more on on YouTube over the past year. And there are some fantastic channels out there like James Collect, uh, uh, oh, Ricky, Ricky Lee Resells, I think it is. Uh, you've got uh, Yakuza Reseller. You know, there's loads. I've mostly missed a load out, but uh, uh, I've, I've been watching. I've been watching his channel quite a lot. Uh, love his contents, but he knows his tech. He definitely knows what he's looking for, and he knows the value of stuff. And one of the things I saw him run over in one of his videos, and he's like, ah, oh, and he picked up this item, and I thought, what the hell is that? A big beast of uh, tech, which is a 300, a Sony 300 disc holder slash player. It's a little bit like a jukebox, and I paused it, and I was like. I did not know these things existed, and now I want one. I'm a massive CD fan. I have loads of CDs, and sometimes when you're putting one in after the other, you're like, oh, a little bit mostly how you feel now when you play a vintage record. You're like, within 30 minutes or even 20 minutes, the thing's finished, and you've got to get up, turn it around, put the, uh, put the pin back on, play it again. Needle back on, sorry, and play it again. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, I'm going to start looking on eBay. I need to get one. And they were anywhere from 80 to 100 to 200 pounds. I was like, oh, I'm not getting one. I'm never going to get one. But it was great to hear his knowledge, understand it all. Uh, and it's one of those things I, I was going on the lookout for. And then just out of the blue, when I was in there picking up this PlayStation 4, they had these two Sony pieces. And I messaged him straight away saying, look, thanks for the heads up. Thanks for your videos. Thanks for your content. Because uh, it gave me the information I needed to go away. And I knew what I wanted to pick this up. But I picked up a 400 disc player. Uh, wires control everything's in there uh, all working uh, and I was just like I can't believe I picked this up after watching that video and you know I am lucky with these bits and pieces but I only knew what I was looking at because I watched these videos and subbed to his channel uh, so hats off and credit where credit's due but I was so I love the fact that I've got this and I'm, I, you guys have seen over the last couple of videos be like you're picking up quite a bit of tech uh, and I'm picking up a bit of tech because I always have this thing in my head that in the next year or two I'm definitely going to move. We're definitely going to move house. We're going to get a bigger house. Uh, and I've always had this thing, you know, I want this like kind of collector's room, which is fine. But I've always wanted a front room where I could have some of my techie pieces where it's convenient for me. So like a hi-fi system with the speakers, LP, uh, a few consoles, a decent sound bar, and then something like this with like where it holds all the CDs and I can play it. So I'm gently getting the tech that I want to make that room look perfect or how I see it in my head now. I've done this when I first ever moved into my house that I'm in now. Uh, and people say like, oh, you start a little bit like uh, in a uh, drawer of stuff with your missus or under the stairs cupboard, like you put stuff away, ironing board, kettles, etc. I've done exactly the same stuff, guys, when I was moving out because it's, it's a daunting task when you move house. It's a lot of, you know, rightly or wrongly, there's so much pressure and you're so stressed doing it. Uh, but I had so much put away. I thought with the little things, like I brought a little sewing kit. I brought like a pack of scissors, uh, uh pots and pans, obviously all that stuff, fridge, freezer. I was buying everything. But this time I'm like, actually, how do I want rooms to sit? I've got space up here to put stuff away. I've got space next door as well. There is another side to this building that no one sees, which is next door, which has got loads of shelves and everything. Uh, and I'm just picking up my electrical bits and pieces as and when I see them. One of the big pieces I want to get is a, uh, I want to get a laser disc player. If you're bought, uh, especially again, I say back to the 90s, laser discs were huge. It was like, you were, I was about to swear then, but you, you, you were like, the, you were the top dog. You were the top dog if you had a laser disc player. You knew someone with a laser disc player. It was like you knew someone who had a cinema. You knew someone who had money if you had a laser disc player. Uh, and I'm keeping an eye out for a laser disc player. And I never thought it'd be possible to find one of these. Uh, let alone a laser disc. So I'm on the lookout now. I'm thinking, you know what? Let's put, put, let's, let's do the benchmarking. Let's say the goal is to try and get a laser disc player this year as well. Then I've kind of got everything I want tech related wise. Uh, so definitely after a laser disc next, but it was fantastic to find this. And again, I can't say much, uh, then thanks for the reselling kids. Uh, I'll definitely put a link up for his channel because he's definitely shown me bits and pieces to pick up. And then guys, finally, Another pickup that come today, uh, and I brought this from eBay. Uh, this was a bit of a strange one. I wasn't expecting to find this. I don't even know too much about it. I don't know if it's it's a legit it's it's legit what I brought, uh, but I was very surprised to see it. So you all know I'm heavily invested into my toys. I love everything pop culture, 
pop culture. Now, VHS, you can tell already it's a VHS. What is it? Monsters in my pocket, the cartoon. So I don't remember too much of this Monsters in my pocket. I don't know if this is a new video. I don't know if this is a pirate. I saw it though on eBay uh, and I was expecting a lot of people to jump on it. 1992, so 1992. I expected a lot of people to jump on it. It wasn't coming up in the normal monster in my pocket searches. So this come up because I was searching some horror VHSs and I stumbled across this. Uh, I paid three pounds for it. So three pounds. Uh, monsters in my pocket, the big screen. So paid three pounds for it. I will watch it a hundred percent just to see, and I'll try and put some pictures up on my Instagram once I watch it. But yeah, for three pound, I weren't going to pass up on that. I, I hardly remember the cartoon for uh, Monsters in my pocket as well. I remember the comic book. Absolutely remember the toys because I've got tons of them, and I've got them. Uh, I've got them in. I've got them loose. You got them in boxes. You had glow in the dark ones. Then you had this massive thing. I guess when the buzz was running out about the monsters, they went on to super scary monsters, spiders, dinosaurs, wrestlers, sportsmen. Uh, but I love the whole monsters in my pocket. Never really knew too much about the cartoon. This come up and I thought, you know what? For three quid, I'm going to jump on it. 1992 slash 1993. Uh, I'm going to give it a watch. I don't think it's a pirate. I don't think it's copied. It, to me, it looks, it looks legit, but you just can't be too sure, can you, with this stuff? I just don't know, guys, but for £3, you know what? Let's take the gamble. Let's see, let's see what it's about. I don't want to put it in and it's something like the horror movie. Have you ever seen a ring? All of a sudden, six images show on my screen and then I've got seven days to bloody live. Uh, that's just me being so dramatic. Uh, let's hope it's not like the ring. Otherwise, I'll be giving this away as a giveaway, guys, to one lucky person. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but yeah, I need to put it in now and see. Now I'm freaking myself out with the ring because that movie scared me when I was younger. I only watched it. And, oh, jeez. Oh, no. What have I done? What have I done? Uh, but yeah, no, it's not. It's not. We know that's just a makes-believe story we tell ourselves. But this, I'm going to check this out. I'll put some pictures on my Instagram. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy with that. So that is a pickup that I picked up off of eBay, £3. Uh, and then I'm trying to think anything else charity shop related for this week. No, that is it. That is absolutely it. A stack with a PlayStation 4. You're not going to, you know, I know you're not going to find a PlayStation 4 for £20. Uh, I'm very, very lucky when I find these. And everyone will say, oh, you're lucky with all your pickups. Uh, and I try and bring people on a journey with me in terms of doing the GoPro stuff. There's some charity shops, guys. I just won't bring the uh, GoPro. I've got very, very good connections. I've got a relationship with these people and I get a lot of good stuff from some of the charity shops I go to. So I tend not to film in those ones. Uh because I'm getting so much decent stuff, but I do charity shop live GoPro when I just go off to other areas and just see what there is. And there's still some good bits and pieces and I'm surprised what people are still, obviously either putting out to charity shops or, you know, I pick up at boot sales. You'd seen the boot sale video that just went out. Uh, lots of gaming bits and pieces, uh, which is just strange and bummy that you find this stuff still at, still at boot sales, still at charity shops. You see the hero quest that I pick up. Uh, and unless sometimes when you've got the GoPro footage, it doesn't sound believable, does it? And I see some of the other people, especially in Facebook. Facebook can be a Facebook, YouTube. They can be, they, you know, there's pros and cons. I've seen trolls are everywhere, aren't they? And I saw some poor chap the other day put on a Facebook group. I think it is the retro retro realm. Uh, and I've had problems in there before, to be fair, where I've put uh, bits up, say, oh, I got these games for free, and you get questioned by everyone. Uh, it, uh, it's a lot of hate in some of these communities. A lot of hate. Uh, but Retro Realm, I've had it. I've had it twice now. And this poor guy uh, who put up a load of stuff saying he got all these consoles from a boot sale, uh, and I was just like, "Wow, what a find!" I know that stuff exists because I see it all the time. And he just—if you've read like the seventy comments, so this guy got so much abuse for just trying to say he found his stuff. I didn't think he was showing off. Didn't think he was doing anything of the sort. But the amount of hate from people is unbelievable. But in this kind of time, you know. It's, it's everywhere now and you just need to try and, I say knock it on the head, you shouldn't have to knock it on the head, you shouldn't have to put up with it, but there are so many people that are that way inclined, uh, which is a shame really, but uh, it's crazy what's still out there, I guess that's the point I'm saying, get out to your charity shops, get out to your boot sales, there is still stuff out there, I wouldn't even say you have to go as early as a boot sale now, when I say, I go at like 5.30 in the morning, 
Uh, but I know people that have gone at 6-7 and there's brilliant bits and pieces that have been put out. Uh, so I think, you know, if you want to find this stuff or even if you just want a bit of fun, bit of an adventure, definitely hit up your local boot sale. Definitely go to a charity shop. Have a look around. Uh, you might not find much charity shop wise. I, I think you need to have those kind of networks in place. I'll know the people. I know when they're putting stuff out, what days they do certain routines, etc. Uh, but boot sales, boot sales is like, I love it. I love it. It's an absolute free for all. It's the banter. It's the hustle. It's the people. Definitely get yourself out to a boot sale. I could say anything. But guys, let's leave it there because this is going to end up being a long charity shop pickup video. It's going to put a lot of people off if it's like 40 minutes or even over 20 minutes. So pickup of the week is definitely going to be the PlayStation 4. I no doubt about that. I'm really intrigued. I keep looking. I'm really intrigued to see what this is about. Yeah, wouldn't it be absolutely hilarious if I put this in and it's someone go, just someone pointing at me going, ha, done you, mate. I've got three quid off you. Thanks for the three quid and it just ends. Because uh, I don't remember the cartoon. I really don't remember the cartoon, hence why I picked it up. Uh, but we'll soon find out. So I'm going to, I'll play that in a minute and put some pictures up on uh, Instagram. But thanks for watching. Take care. All the best. Again, thoughts and views in the comments. I haven't been going back to a lot recently because I've been quite busy with work. But I will go back to them. Uh, give me a couple of days, guys. I'll catch up on the last couple of videos in terms of the comments. And I'll interact with a lot more people in those comments below. But definitely put out what we've spoken about today. Trends going forward. Uh, anyone got any info on this? Am I going to have seven days to live? Is it sound like the ring? Is it going to be someone pointing at me saying I've done ya? I don't know. Uh, but yes, thoughts and views below. Uh, Till next time, guys, stay safe, take care, and see you again shortly.